Well, hi, and thanks for joining me in my shop. We're going to carry on with working on this radio. And in my nicely reorganized shop here. So pull out all the goodies here. And we'll pull out the radio chassis. Now, I think the very last thing that happened in my last video was I discovered I did not have to separate the speaker wires that he actually plugged into uh, a little spot right on the chassis here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's radio repair humor. Yes, even the radios have a sense of humor. I like to, like to make uh, make people laugh at you. That's what they do. Okay, let's put this to the side. Now, what we're going to do here today is, or in this video, is we're going to we're going to change out a few capacitors. That very good. <laughs> Yes, and specifically, these three here, which might be a little hard to see in the video, and one, two, three, four, five paper wax looking capacitors. I mean, inside these uh, these capacitors, from what I understand, these can also just be the same old uh, uh, a paper, oil, wax type construction, just inside of a, uh, a plastic shell, if you like. But they turned out not to be any more reliable than just just the uh, the waxed up, oiled up capacitors. So. Oh, I see one of these wires is all the insulation's all cracked on it, right in the stress points, of course. And we'll probably end up, we'll certainly end up checking these older resistors. This is this is quite an old radio. Um, one of you found it on Radio Museum. Radio Museum's a big radio database, fantastic in fact, but mostly focused on European radios. Although because it's wide open to the world, people like me here in North America have been entering in uh, North American radio uh, information. So. Uh, so I, I'm a member of Radio Museum, and that's where I get a lot of my schematics from. Especially when you see me working on a, a European radio, which I haven't done for a little while. Uh, for sure, the schematics coming from uh, Radio Museum. So, but there's many, many sources on the internet now, if you know where to look, uh, to find schematics. So, and talking about which, I got to print the schematic out for this. I didn't actually print it out, so I'm going to go do that. Okay, so now I have the schematic, very nice looking schematic. Um, it's drawn in a style to uh, what I would call the white space style. It's been drawn in a way to move everything out, spread it all out nicely, fill the whole page with with writing. So I'm a little wary about how some of these circuits circuit lines have been laid out and I'm pretty anxious to color this up uh, to sort it out because just looking at it I know I'm going to go cross-eyed but but pretty clearly there's the IF section the output um, output uh, tube some kind of volume tuning control thing going on here with capacitor resistor network coils up here in the front end and uh, some horrendously complicated thing going on down here. I don't know exactly what all that is. So, now what I'm doing to uh, help help uh, help you to follow along with, with uh, what I'm doing here in the shop. You can hold this up to the camera, but it's a little hard to look at. I'm going to provide copies of this uh, through a link to something called Evernote, where I'm keeping photographs and the like. So I have another whole record of this uh, stuff, um, photographic record and some notes and that. So I think I'm going to open that up to everybody. Um, and that's where you'll find things like this. Um, 
so I'm just a little wary about publicizing this stuff it's come from a, a sort of a members only kind of database but uh, but we'll, we'll give it a go anyway and see after all there's only a few hundred people watching a video like this and uh, so in the uh, comment section of this video I'll put the uh, links to to grab the schematic because I know some of you like to follow along and I've taken some photographs too some close-up photographs and under close-up photography these um, capacitors turn out to be not cracked they're not uh, they're in good shape actually but we're still going to change them out so let's start on that that would be a good idea first thing I want to do I'm going to relocate the camera here Give me one second because I've rearranged my shot. I have to to do a little rearrangement here. Hmm. Let's see how this works. I'm a little high up now. Burr. I'd rather have this sitting about like this. I have no way to position it there right now. Hmm. Let me stop the video and ponder this. For a minute. Okay. After a fair bit of trial and error here with various solutions to my camera problems, and you know this is something I can never ever show you on camera because it's the camera. I can't show you the camera with the camera, so you never see all the weird things I'm doing to get these camera shots. Strange approaches that I am taking. Oh, okay, there we go. So, what we're going to start with here, in terms of making a repair, we're going to start on this capacitor right here. And if you look at it closely, you can see that it's actually cracked right down the seam, and you can see right inside the capacitor. So, that's what happens to these guys. They, they crack. And uh, although this crack, I had not actually seen until I set up the camera. From what I could see, the thing actually looked pretty good. But uh, these are notoriously bad capacitors because they look so good when they're not. See, the wax ones look like crap when they are crap. In fact, Sometimes they look like crap and they're actually still doing their job because you know, not all these capacitors are working hard in a rate book. Okay, I think we're all set to start here. And not all capacitors, if they uh, their rating changes or that kind of stuff, they're not all going to have a tremendous effect on the radio. Okay, so that's the spot right there. He's out of there. Get him out. Oh yeah, look at look at the end of it here. It's cracked right open. Yeah. So what's going to happen is moisture is going to go in there. The uh, paper is going to absorb some of it. And uh, let's see, what's it say on it? It says. What's that say there? Fifty-one. Or is it? Or is that a point five one? 5-1, never heard of that, never heard of that. Something on the other side. Oh, look at how cracked it is, eh? Why don't we finish that right off? Let's see what's inside here. Yeah! <laughs> and there wasn't much to that, was there? So, starting to see some of the structure inside. To it inside there. Let's see. 
Okay, so I can see a mica sheet in there. That's great. Or some kind of plastic right at the edge of my screwdriver there. You see these are clamped over. Now you can go out so you can see the uh, moisture, effect of moisture in there. Right in there. So, you know, things happen slowly, but these radios have been around a long time, so slow adds up to something. I'm just going to try to see if I just can't pop that rate out entirely. There it goes. So here's the actual capacitor. I've never actually looked at one of these. So that brass uh, clamp, if I can call it that, that's wrapped around the outside, appears to be nothing. You know, it's not connected to anything. Let's check it. Let's give it a little check here. Now you won't be able to see my voltmeter in because I've got the close-up lens on, but I'll just tell you what it says. So I'm on the 200K scale. Shows an open circuit. So it's not shorted, but I wouldn't think it would be shorted. Come back here. I don't uh, no, so this brass part is not connected to anything electrically. It's just sitting out there. Boy, that looks pretty tough to take apart. Let me uh, let me give it some power here. Way off in the distance. Where I've got some something solid to push on. Wow, that's not coming apart easy. But anyway, that's what's in there. Pretty cool. See, basically, these are two shells. And then they, uh, how do they stick them together? I'm not sure. I can imagine glue. They maybe they glue it or weld it with a bit of heat. I don't know. There we go. That was interesting. I've never actually looked inside one of those. Put that into my ever-growing container of junk. Broken parts, rather. Now, any chance we can remember where that came from? Yeah, it came from here. And it goes down to, down to here. So, now, I'm going to have to find that on the schematic because I got no clue what it is. It was coming right off of this antenna coil here. That should be pretty easy to figure out. Telescopic antenna. What? This schematic shows a telescopic antenna. So hang on a sec. Is this really the right one? I don't think this is the right. Uh, I don't think this is the right schematic. Hey, what's going on here? Hmm, maybe I've got an American version of the radio or something like that here. But uh, I don't think this is. This is not at all the right radio. This is some multi-band. What have I got here? Okay, time to get another schematic. Hold on. Okay, so now I got the right schematic. This here. And it looks dramatically different than the other one. I don't know how I printed the wrong one here. But uh, wow, this is some multi-band radio. Port portable multi-band radio of some sort. I don't know what's going on. 
Okay, now I've got the tube layout diagram here. And it would certainly look like that tube is the 1A7G. And I think the 1A7G is the detector RF amplifier. It's actually the radio, 1A7. Okay, so looking at the 1A7, and we're taking a look at pin number one, two, three, four, four, five, pin number five, I think, pin number five. And of course, they have not numbered the pins on here. Phooey. This tube should have a, a grid cap on it. Yes, it does. Just making doubly sure. I'm on the right one. And the D D D D D. Let's see. One capacitor comes right off of the tuning capacitor right to the coil. I think that's this one, which is a Uh, oh no, that's a very that, that's this thing right here. Mm hmm. Excuse me for all my mumbling here. There, there, there it is. This is this one has got to be that one. C one point one millifarads. And then there should be another capacitor coming off this point on the, on the coil. I'm looking, looking, looking. I don't see any capacitor here. Okay, so here's where I'm talking about. And this will be a little bit out of focus for you, I'm sorry. But uh, right in this area. There's the antenna coil, right here, and there's the tuning capacitor, it's a little hard to see, right there in front of my finger. Under my finger is another trimmer that's right on the variable capacitor, and then there's this fixed capacitor right here. This must be right on the edge of some brightness issue on my camera, eh? It's flick flashing like that. Anyway, not to worry about that. That's a point one, uh, and there should be another capacitor coming off, coming off it. Come off it! I don't see another capacitor on here. Ooh. Besides, these ones, these ones are shown connected to the grid cap. No, not this one, not not this one. No, this one's from the coil over. The other one is from the coil, same spot on the coil. Same spot on the coil over to, so let me count these pins again. That would be eight, seven, six, pin number five. All right, pin number five, one A7. I don't know what pin five is, Let's find out here. 1A7, 1A7, show me a 1A7, there it is, pentagrid converter, glass octal-type used in superheterodyne circuits having battery power supplies, so that's exactly what it's in. Tube requires octal socket, maybe mount to any position. Filament voltage 1.4. Um, oh, here we are, right here, what am I doing? So, pin number five is... Oh, okay, pin number five is the first control grid. Pin number five is the first control grid. Okay, 
if I see the capacitor now. Okay, so when we look at this, signal grid or SG, I think that's what that stands for. Oh, bingo, right there is the capacitor. Do I see any others? Sorry about my flashing camera, it just doesn't quite like the, uh, the amount of light I've got on it here. No, the next thing you meet up with is a resistor, so the only thing that's only capacitor connected right off that pin is that guy. That's got to be it. 0.01. 0.01, that's easy. And its brother right beside it was a 0.1. So we'll do 0.01 first. 0.01. Okay, let's get the one end soldered. should be much easier to work on. Just push it back away from the resistor. There we go. We'll be able to blob some solder in there. How's that look? That's one done. Okay, we might as well do this guy right here. Next. Maybe I can get him right out of there. Maybe use my stronger pliers here.
deciding iron is not hot enough there. Let's Not conducting much heat, that's for sure. <clears throat> Let me give it a little bit of a clean up there. There we go. Just not conducting heat fast enough into the joint to heat it up, raise its temperature. Gotta watch out for those two words, heat and temperature. Two different things. And I can put lots of heat on this particular connection, don't have to worry too much about it. There it goes. Let's take a look at it. open just like the other one yeah you know what I could not see that crack either but it's shot and it says uh, what's it say on it there? What, do you, what do you see on that four three zero and I, you know I think that's just a part number I don't think it's telling us much of anything but if we use the circuit diagram which is so important to do that one is a point one, point one, a pretty important point one too, because I believe all the signal from the antenna is passing through it. I think. What's it doing? Yeah, that seems to be the case. It's uh, conducting the entire signal from the antenna. Producer went to sleep there. He must not, must not be watching what's actually happening. I need to fire the guy, but I'm related to him. Yeah. Nepotism runs high here in Jim's radio shop. Check the YouTube TV channel. There we go. Sorry, I got so quiet there. <laughs> I actually, actually forgot I was shooting a video. Yeah, pretty quiet. Yeah, I'm being spoiled by the uh, hangout stuff I'm doing. Where I'm not alone here on video. Get rid of some of those little tails. Okay, that's two of three of them. Let's go for the third one. Now, the third one's actually buried under another basket. Have a look. Have a look. This guy. So we're going to do two of these. Two of these guys. Let me just uh, break the video so I don't end up with a 200 million gigabyte file here. And we'll just carry on. And through the magic of video, you don't even know I stopped it, do you? Because I didn't relocate the camera. So we're going to get rid of this. 
this one here first. If I can get the cutter into that other end there. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, these, these cutters are a little big to get in there. I'll try my little ones, my little ruined ones. <laughs> can, you, can you see the hole blown in those? Oh, isn't that terrible? These are very nice cutters, and then they. I cut a wire that was still plugged into the wall. How dumb can you get? And I cut bang. And that's what happened to these nice, my favorite little cutters, which I almost never use anymore. I wonder if I could fix those somehow. Where did that capacitor go? I tried to make a break for it there. It's hiding. There it is. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, it's got a pretty good ding in the side of it there. Man, you know, that's enough to to crush the structure inside. I wonder what happened there. Must have been during its uh, during installation or something. I can't Oh, there's a number on it. Again, it's just got a part number, stock number, something like that. So we'll have to find that on the schematic. And that one, luckily, is hooked up to a tube, so we can figure it out pretty quick. And which tube is it? Now i got all my documentation here. You can quickly see. Now, hey, by the way, there's my camera apparatus. That's what you're normally looking for. I just lay the camera on here and it looks through the lens. And you just zoom it around. <laughs> and the beauty of it is I can just pick it up and stick it somewhere else. Boom, like that. Pretty quick. So, okay, where are we on the schematic? We are right on top of the tube known as... The tube known as... Known as a 1H5. 1H5 with a grid cap. Yep, there it is. Okay, so the 1H5 is here. The capacitor was coming off a pin number. The other capacitor is hiding the Hiding the uh, tube key from from view here, so I'm gonna lift it. Also, just move it aside. There be the key. And now, with good certainty, I can say that's pin number eight. Pin number eight on a one H five. Pin number eight on a one H five. Where's my book? One H five. There it is. The pin number eight is not used. It's a fake. So it's just a point to connect the capacitor. So that's not going to help in that case because uh, it's actually connecting via that green wire all the way to the volume control. Wow, I'm going to show you those wires in a moment. Those are sad looking wires. Really sad looking wires. Um, goes all the way to the volume control. It's the green wire on the volume control. Let's see here. Volume control. Volume control. Here's the volume control. <laughs> they, have, they have it colored. Blue, green, and black. So it's the green wire. Sure enough, the green wire goes to the slider. And there's a capacitor right there, C19.01. There we are, 
Hey, that wasn't too tough. That was not too tough. Point oh one. Point oh one. Right in here. And of course, you know what? The audio is flowing through this capacitor. So if this capacitor is weak, it doesn't have much capacity left, then we won't be uh, we won't be hearing much audio. So it's gotta this is a good one to replace. Now, frankly, I don't know for sure that these old capacitors were shot. I mean, we can see the physical condition of them, but the electrical conditions can be surprisingly good. Wouldn't want to bet on it, that's for sure, but... soldered like that and trimmed. Okay, the other side now, right in position there. Connect to this terrible green wire, which I haven't shown you yet. We should get some of these files uploading now because I won't get these uploaded for the rest of today, probably. Uh, come on. They may not, well, that, that can be soldered like that. It may not be obvious why I'm struggling with the tools because on a close up, you can't see some of the restrictions that might be. Working down through or angles I've got to let's see if this will stay on here long enough to get soldered. And you can't see anything in your view, and I can barely see it myself. Then I put a lot of solder there. Uh, breathing in the smoke too. So that takes care of that capacitor. Now this one. This one is going to ground on one end. <clears throat> oh, did I just make a mistake there? Yikes. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now I gotta check a photograph here. Hold on one second. 